This is Dr. Julie Elner. You're watching Chapter 2 of my Belly Balloon presentation. We'll just pick up where we left off in Chapter 1. This is going to be a video that's going to show how the balloon goes in. As I've stated before, it's not done with surgery. So what you're going to see is a camera which looks like a long black tube, it's called an endoscope, that will go in to the mouth. But the other thing that you'll see on this video going into the mouth is a long clear tube that has the deflated balloon on the end of it. And it looks like a little jalapeno pepper. And it's through this tube that we fill the balloon with saline and then the tube will deploy off of the balloon. So what you're going to see in the video is the black endoscope, which is the camera, following the deflated balloon as it slides into the stomach. Then the balloon is filled with saline and then the tube pops off the balloon, which is self-sealing. That's very much like breast implants are put in today. And it takes eight to 10 minutes to put it in. So what happens after six months? The retrieval or removal process is extremely simple. It takes about eight to 10 minutes. Again, it's done through the mouth. What you're going to see is the black endoscope, which is the camera going into the stomach. And then you'll see a little tiny puncturing needle that punctures the balloon, suctions the saline out, and then a little tiny grasper will grab the deflated balloon and pull it out. So this video is showing the camera looking at the balloon. Now you'll see the little tiny puncture needle as it pokes right into the balloon. It's hooked up to suction and the balloon is deflated and little tiny graspers will grab the balloon and pull the deflated balloon out through the mouth. That's all there is to it. So what are the side effects? When the FDA decided to bring the balloon to the United States, they wanted to find out what is the worst that patient could feel after they had a balloon put in. The most common complaints that people have are nausea, queasiness, and vomiting. So they said, okay, let's find out how bad can it be. They put balloons in people and they didn't let the patients have any medications to counteract the side effects. When that was done in the United States trial, you can see on the pie chart in the upper left, that 59.7% of patients reported their symptoms as being mild or easily tolerated. Almost 35% said, yeah, it caused me some discomfort. And less than 6% said, yeah, my side effects were kind of severe and I wasn't able to get up and do the normal things that I normally do with my day. So the important thing to realize is that that's as bad as it gets when absolutely no medications are given to patients. But of course, when we put balloons in people, we give people anti-nausea medications. We give people medications to relax the stomach so it doesn't spasm around that balloon and cause stomach pain. But you can see on the lower left, the list of complications or side effects that people typically complain of, heartburn, stomach ache, nausea and vomiting, my patients typically say that these symptoms last about three days. I do tell people to plan on taking a week off just in case you tend to have symptoms for longer, but the vast majority of my patients say that on the fourth day, they're back to doing their normal activities. So in terms of going back to work, I do tell my patients, take your week off. You'll probably feel fine for the last several days of that week, but let's use that week that you're recovering from the balloon to just plan how your life is going to be for the next year, to maybe think about your lifestyle, to think about your schedule, to please take some time for yourself to plan how this year is going to be different for you. One of the things that I see my patients struggling with is that they're caregivers. They're always taking care of someone else. They're taking care of the kids, they're taking care of the boss, they're taking care of the spouse, maybe an elderly parent, and they just don't take time for themselves. So please take that week to sit down and say, okay, this is how I'm going to reprioritize my time so you can really take advantage of this entire year. I contact my patients 
every single day from the day the balloon is put in to help you manage medications to make sure that you're taking the right medications for the right symptoms if you're having symptoms and I will contact you at least every day until your symptoms are absolutely gone and you're feeling fine. But the most important item on this slide is the very last item on the slide, which says, please take time for yourself. That's one of the biggest challenges in getting a hold of that weight is to take time for yourself. This slide represents the entire program. Of course, it starts with getting the balloon, but the balloon is only a tool to help you learn what diet and exercise modifications you need to make to your lifestyle to make sustainable habits doable for the rest of your life. It's up to you to embrace your new lifestyle. So during this year of coaching, we're developing habits that will allow you to either maintain your weight after the balloon is removed, or maybe even continue to lose weight after the balloon is removed. That's absolutely possible. You just continue to do the same things after the balloon is out that you were doing while the balloon is in. So how does it feel? People ask me all the time, am I going to feel it sloshing around? Am I going to know that it's there? In all honesty, most patients don't notice that it's there at all. You might feel like you have a little bit of food in your stomach, but in terms of normal activities and even doing exercise, contact sports, the vast majority of people say that there's absolutely no difference whatsoever. Are there food intolerances? Unlike surgery, where there are certain foods that sometimes really don't go well after surgery, with the balloon, you're able to eat really whatever you want to eat. But should you eat those things? No. That's why you're in a diet and, and behavior modification plan. So we can come up with a doable plan for you. But yes, it is possible to digest all types of foods. Who can get the belly balloon? There's some confusion about this because the FDA only researched patients with a body mass index between 30 and 40. So they came out with their approval only for patients between 30 and 40, but that doesn't mean that patients with a body mass index outside that range can't get the balloon. It just hasn't been studied. The majority of balloons worldwide are placed in patients in the lower weight ranges. Who is not able to get the belly balloon? People who have had prior stomach surgery. If you've had surgery in your abdomen that doesn't involve your stomach, you're fine. But if you've had ulcer surgery or band surgery or prior bariatric surgery, you are not able to have the belly balloon. If you're pregnant or actively breastfeeding, you have to wait until that's completed before you can have your belly balloon placed. If you have active liver disease or cirrhosis, then you're not able to have the belly balloon. If you're on blood thinners or if you are not able to stop your blood thinners for six months, then people aren't able to get the belly balloon. If a patient has a large hiatal hernia, that's a loosening of the muscles at the top of the stomach, which is oftentimes associated with severe heartburn, those patients should not get the belly balloon. Stomach or esophageal abnormalities, those are oftentimes diseases or maybe genetic abnormalities that a patient has. We'll go through that and test you if need be to make sure that your stomach and your esophagus functions normally before we put a balloon in. If a patient has inflammatory disease of the GI tract, like Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, those patients should not get the belly balloon. And if patients are unable to take antacids because of maybe an interaction with another medication that they're unable to stop, those patients should not have the belly balloon. And if a patient is allergic to silicone or baking soda, they should not get the belly balloon. But who loves the belly balloon? It's very popular amongst moms with excess body weight who are trying to get that baby weight off. Patients who are infertile due to that excess estrogen that we talked about earlier. Those are very commonly patients who come to me wanting balloons. Patients who have joint and back aches, that's the most common physical complaint that's associated with weight. And most of my patients come to me saying, I just want to be out of pain. 
Patients who are in need of orthopedic or back surgery and their surgeon is saying, we can't operate on you until you lose some weight. I get a lot of referrals from orthopedic surgeons from, for patients who need to lose weight so they can have their orthopedic surgery. And parents and grandparents who just want to be more active with the children, want to play a more active role in the children's lives. And certainly those patients with more serious medical problems like high blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, or if they see their older family members struggling with this and they don't want to wait until they get sick before they do something about their weight. But amazingly, the belly balloon is very popular amongst doctors and office staff. When I went to train to do the belly balloon, I was in a group of about 30 doctors who were training to, to do the balloon. And three of them in the group had actually had the balloon itself. And because they had had such success with it, they went off to training to learn how to place it in their patients. But because doctors and their office staff tend to be a little bit more in the know about new procedures and the safety of different procedures, they're really jumping on board with getting the belly balloon because it's so safe and it's so effective.